it always bothers me when I hear coaches saying, oh, well, they're more susceptible during this phase. And it's just frustrating because it's like, A, there's not enough research. How do you know? But B, say she is, say we know they're more susceptible to ACL during the follicular phase. And Mm -hmm. we know that as a fact, we're still going to be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're still going to be doing the same controllables, whether we know this information or not, we're going to Mm -hmm. still do year round strength training, Mm -hmm. talk about proper nutrition, maybe extra protein intake during certain phases. It's like, it it doesn't, I want to say it doesn't really matter because we're still going to control what we can control. So it's just frustrating. (laughs) Like what, what do you expect your athlete is going to get, you know, get her period and her follicular stage is starting. And it's like, sorry, coach can't play today. (laughs) And from a psychological standpoint, because we know the impact of our psychological being actually affects our movement patterns and how we deal with competition we're doing more harm than good telling our athletes, you are much more fragile. You're much more susceptible right now. You're now setting your athlete up for failure. Let's use positive words because that actually has been shown to benefit our athletes. Mm -hmm. And let's have our athletes understand, oh, I'm so sorry. Like you have your period that really stinks. How do you feel? Let's talk about how you feel because you probably don't have a lot of people to talk about that with. Like totally complain about your cramps to me. I can relate. And then let's get to work because we have things. Okay. So this is going to get interesting because I hear a lot of, well, we need to like, really like track the cycle and program around it and then like cut back here and then add here and take advantage of testosterone levels. And I'm just like, yeah, but like, do we ever get to a point where we are kind of babying our athletes? Like we still kind of have a program to complete and to progress. So maybe we should instead focus on proper recovery and nutrition and not necessarily pull back on the program. Mm-hmm. It's like, when are we ever going to have time to progress? Cause this, this happens every month. Exactly. What's every your opinion month. on this? Because I see this all over sports science, Twitter. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I, absolutely I hate it too. Hate it. I think it's furthering doing a disservice to female athletes within research. Yep. I think it's been great that we're doing more research on females, but now we're doing this thing that once again mm-hmm. is, I think it's a disservice to females. Um, why, why are we doing these little nitty gritty things that have such a marginal effect from what we know right now, such a marginal effect on actual performance and recovery, changing how we're training around our menstrual cycle also our hormones are multifactorial and we're all focused on testosterone. And we think we like to vilify estrogen. Estrogen has been shown to be a part of the tissue reparation process. So actually if we train really hard when estrogen peaks, that could be a good thing because estrogen is allowing our tissues to recover faster. That's where, if you do look at the differences between males and females in terms of recovery, a lot of females can do, let's say higher volume or train more frequently compared to males, one, we have a different muscle, muscle masses. So we don't get as quite fatigued, but two, with a higher level of estrogen, it actually helps aid in the recovery process because estrogen is an anti-inflammatory. So quite frankly, we need to start talking about the positives of being a female when it comes to this, because we don't know enough. We do not know enough. And I, from a biochemical background, it really frustrates me because in my studies, you know, my undergrad and master's studies, I'm like, hey, in biochemistry, we always talk about how we still don't really know everything about estrogen and testosterone. And then you turn to sports science, they're like, oh, testosterone is peaking. We should totally take advantage of this. Like one rep max? Like, yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. That, because exactly. what if she has two games that week? Like, exactly. You know, how does that, how does that? Multifactorial. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And female athletes in this realm is still such a new thing. I'd love it if we stopped doing such a disservice to us. And instead we recognize that we have our menstrual cycles. We recognize that's a conversation to have with your athlete because yeah, I know exactly what that's like. Sometimes when I have a really have a period, I'm like, oh man, it's so hard for me to like brace. I just feel like I can't. And that happens sometimes, but that's a me thing. That doesn't mean that's a you thing because your period is different than my period. And my period this month could be different than my period next month. And that's normal and that's okay. But it doesn't mean that we need to change things. It means have a conversation about it, be open about it. Don't fear talking about our menstrual cycles. Let's focus on those big things first and get our athletes training frequently. 
with consistently year round, focusing on new sleep and nutrition. And if your athlete does that, and then you want to throw in these little nuances, Mm -hmm. I am much more, I'm, I'm less angered by it, but we're, we're, we're not focused on the big things. We're so, as a society, we like to focus on the little things before the big things because the big things are less sexy. 